There are times when I hear people's testimonies about how they met, how the Lord brought them together. And a lot of times it seems as if there was no struggle. But then I know of other individuals. It's like you are literally going through hell before you even meet this person. Someone the Lord has chosen for you. And sometimes you and the Lord brings you together, you're still going through literal hell. It's like the gates of hell has been unleashed against you, trying to stop this relationship. You may be wondering why. Or for some people, the Lord wants you to have uncompromising love. And not just for each other, but the Lord wants you to have uncompromising love for Him. Even to the point where if your spouse goes astray, that you will not go astray from Him. For example, clearly the Lord brought Eve to Adam. He said it wasn't good for the man to be alone. He said it was going to create a suitable helper for him. He looked around, couldn't find anyone, put Adam to sleep, removed one of his ribs, and created Eve, the woman, for him. But then the devil came along and tempted Eve. She ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Then she gave the fruit to Adam, and he ate it. What the Lord wants from his sons and daughters is that even after putting you together with the person he has ordained for you, that that person will not become an idol, that your love for him will be greater than your love for that person, even to the point if the person goes astray, that you will not follow that individual, but you'll have uncompromised love for the Lord Jesus Christ. Another example, now it's not the Lord brought them together, but in Judges 16, Delilah used love as a weapon to wear down Samson. Basically nagged him to death, asking him what is the source of his strength, to try to cause him to break his covenant with God. In a situation like that, your love for the Lord has to be so great that you will not break your covenant with the Lord, not even for your spouse. Samson, he should have put Delilah away. And another example where a person compromised his love for the Lord is found in King Solomon. The Lord selected Jedidiah, also known as Solomon, to succeed David as king. He also had a special honor for Solomon to build the temple of God. Solomon completed the assignment it was great, but Solomon compromises love for the Lord. And for that, I'll read from 1 Kings 11, verses 1 through 10. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon, clave unto these in love. So the very woman, or very people, the Lord warned against. Solomon, clave to them in the name of love. Entering into the relationship was disobeying the Lord. Oh, by the way, it says women of Moabites. Now, isn't this interesting? Ruth was from Moab. Ruth is actually in Solomon's genealogy. But Ruth didn't lead boys astray. Also, when you read the story of Ruth, you see that Boaz was an older man. So he'd been established with the Lord. Ruth was younger in her faith. Well, at least in Ruth 1, you see that Ruth had accepted Yahweh as her God. So it wasn't about her being a Moabitess, which was, in a sense, even though she was a Moabitess, it was still okay for boys to marry her, 
because she had accepted Yahweh as her God. But for Solomon, that wasn't the case. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his heart turned, or correction, and his wives turned away his heart. The Lord does not want a repeat of the events in Genesis 2 and 3, where he brought a woman into the man's life, and the woman led him astray. And today, he doesn't want to bring a man or woman into his daughter or his son's lives. And even though the person is of him, that the relationship causes one or both of them to stray away from the Most High God. So yes, for some people, to make you adamant, you go through a little bit more, sometimes a little bit longer, so that throughout the test of time, you will not compromise your love for the Lord, for no one. In Matthew 10, the Lord spoke about him coming to bring division, but a person's foes shall be a member of his or her household. But he also said, those who love basically son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So have that mindset, loving the person the Lord gives to you, but not loving the person to the point that if that person is led into sin, that you go along with that person as opposed to remaining adamant and not following the person if he or she goes astray. And especially when you have what could be called a high calling, the stakes are too high and the enemy will try to use anyone he can the same way he used Eve to get to Adam. In a lot of ways, as a man, you are the gatekeeper for the woman. And as a woman, you are the gatekeeper for the man. And both of you have to be on point. Both of you have to be on guard. And if one falls, the other should be helping the other person up rather than falling also. Your love for the Lord has to be uncompromising. Continue verse 4 of 1 Kings 11. For it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord, his God, as was the heart of David, his father. So everybody and the mother knows about David committing adultery with Bathsheba, sinning against Uriah, and then having the man killed to cover up the pregnancy. Yet, he is used as a model regarding his heart. When you read Psalm 51, you see that David repented of his actions. You didn't hear about David doing the, such things again. So the Lord has the ability to forgive. So if your spouse goes astray, the Lord has the ability to forgive the person. But do not go into sin with that person. Ever. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Then did Solomon, oh gosh, then did Solomon build in high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. So again, your love for the Lord has to be uncompromising, that if your spouse were to go astray, that you would not go there with a person. It doesn't mean that relationship will end. The same way, Adam and Eve, even if the Lord rendered judgment against them, put them out of the Garden of Eden, their marriage didn't fall apart because it was tested. And things really didn't go awry until Adam ate the fruit. It's like Eve ate, it's like nothing really happened, but the moment Adam did. So you cannot be a conduit 
that allows the enemy to get to your spouse. And you can't allow the enemy to use your spouse to get to you. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned away from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, where he kept not that which the Lord commanded. So ladies and gentlemen, no matter what the Lord gives to you or who the Lord gives to you, he as the giver is more important than the gift. So if your spouse or your future spouse starts going astray, do not go astray also. Remain tethered to the Lord. So yes, some people, you go through a little bit more because the enemy is going to challenge your relationship. And you need to be adamant that no matter what, that even if your spouse falls off, you will not. And you'll continue serving the Lord for all your days. And if it means to kind of hand your spouse over to the Lord and say, Lord, he or she's in your hand, kind of like the prodigal son, and in due time, that person came back. So again, ensure you have uncompromising love for the Lord, where a spouse or a future spouse will not lead you astray. God bless you, and Jesus the Christ is Lord.